hello beautiful and rational people. To end this first day of my three courses, here is the first class session of Psychology 01. In my first video, I said that I have two bachelor's degrees, one in history, the other in psychology. In my second video, I already conducted the first class session of History 01, so now I will conclude this Monday with an overview of what to expect in Psychology 01. Just as History 01 can be seen as an introduction to the introduction of history, Psychology 01 can be seen as an introduction to the introduction of psychology. As you can tell, Psychology 101 will try to fulfill your core curriculum or prepare you for future psychology courses. But Psychology 01 will simply teach you how to think like a psychological scientist. Now, take note that I've said psychological scientist and not psychologist. This is because a psychologist, by definition, has a PhD in psychology, which I do not possess. It is illegal and unethical for someone to advertise himself as a psychologist without the necessary PhD. That is why I call myself a psychological scientist, not a psychologist. Essentially, all psychologists are psychological scientists, but not all psychological scientists are psychologists. Therefore, I'm going to teach you in this course how to think like a psychological scientist, a member of the community of social scientists. A historian may or may not be considered a social scientist, but a psychological scientist definitely is. For example, the word theory in psychology falls under the scientific definition, not the common definition. If a psychological scientist claims to have a theory, this is because that theory is supported by a massive quantity of empirical data. Of course, you might ask, why is it so important to think like a psychological scientist instead of thinking like a political scientist or a natural scientist? Well, you shouldn't think like a psychological scientist at the, at the cost of thinking like another kind of scientist. But remember, psychology is the study of mind and behavior. As a science, psychology does pronounce quantitative measurements of the mind and behavior, but these are fascinating phenomena. Sometimes they're even more fascinating than the stars and planets and moons. Mind and behavior are extremely complex, yet they definitely exist in this world, so we can't just write them off as figments of our imagination. Rather, we must engage in the arduous task of scientifically describing phenomena that might very well resemble our childhood imaginary friends. This is a bold, daunting challenge for psychological scientists, but it's a challenge we accept nonetheless. Join me as I, every day in, psycho in, psychology, in psychology 01, explore concept after concept with you and ask you to think about the concept from a psychological perspective. Now that I've spent this entire Monday taking you through the first class session of each of my three courses, join me on Wednesday as I take you through the second class session of each course. I'll be teaching all three of them on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so you can expect a total of nine videos per week. If I were actually teaching an hour per session, which I will never do, you would be getting nine hours worth of course credit per week. That is why I strongly, strongly encourage you to watch all nine weekly videos every week, thereby obtaining a comprehensive knowledge of Skepticism 101, History 01, and Psychology 01. I've been Varun Gupta, the Autistic Skeptic, and I look forward to seeing you all again this Wednesday. Until then, think skeptically, historically, and psychologically.